Hello, my dear sewing friends. What do we have here? As you can tell, I'm really excited. Now, today we're going to unbox, test, and rate seven most unique sewing tools that might just make your and my sewing life a little bit easier. Now, I've been wanting to get some of these for a really long time. Usually in my sewing, I'm pretty bare bones. I try to make it work with whatever I already have at my disposal at home. So I'm really excited about this, especially about the first one because it's one step away from being magical. I think I found it. All right, so this is the first sewing tool that we're going to test. It might look like an ordinary thread, but it really is far from it. And to test it out here, I have some warm water. I have a piece of fabric, scissors, and a hand sewing needle. First, I'm gonna go ahead and thread my hand sewing needle. And then we're going to sew this little piece of fabric together. Needle is threaded. This piece of fabric has been basted together by hand. And now the moment of truth. We're gonna take this and we're gonna submerge it in warm water. And let's watch. Oh my God, look at this. It disappears so quick. Look at that. <laughs> wow, it is gone. It is completely gone. Wow, I am, I'm, I'm literally shocked. I had no idea that this is going to work. This product, from what I understand, has been on the market for 30 years, maybe more. I read about it for the first time in the sewing book from the 90s by Nancy Zeman. I mean, she is amazing, so I knew I could trust her, but I've never heard about water-soluble thread before that. So I've been sewing for over 10 years, and I was like, where was this all my life? So this is, <laughs> this dissolves so quickly, so clean. This is just some sort of, I don't know, sorcery. All jokes aside, why do we need water soluble thread? So this is actually really great for basting in zippers or attaching seams or basting in hems, anywhere where you want to baste your work first and then secure it with an actual thread from a sewing machine. So that way you don't have to worry about removing those basting stitches and they're all gone after the first first wash. So this is just five out of five. Now, here's a quick tip when using your water-soluble thread that I know that I will be applying. Storing this water-soluble thread away from all of the other threads that you have with a label that clearly indicates this is water-soluble thread. Otherwise, you might find yourself in a position of a very fun but brutal April's Fool joke, right? And yes, I also tested it out on a sewing machine and it works here just fine. This next sewing tool is supposed to be small but mighty. We have four little colorful discs that's supposed to really make pattern drafting a little bit easier, especially that final step that I never do. So when I bought this, I thought this is such a great idea, but now I'm having, uh, I'm having my doubts, but we won't know until we try. So let's do it. Now I've just finished drafting this very simple shirt pattern for my daughter and for another very special project that is dear to my heart. So this is going to be the perfect occasion to test these little things out. Each one of these little discs has a number on it. This one is 10 millimeters. This one is seven, five, and three. So the name of the game is, you see some pattern discs work very simply. You go ahead, take your pencil, place it inside of that little hole, place it on a piece of paper, and you use the edge of your drafted pattern as a guide, and that's how you mark your seam allowances. But it's not the case with these ones. So if you look a little closer, you will see there's sort of this little lip, little ridge over here. That is because you have to have your pattern already cut out, and then you place this disc inside of your pattern, sort of on the edge so that way you can feel that it's touching and that's how you mark your seam allowances with these particular discs. It does go very smooth and very quickly, but that being said, on the other hand, you do have to have your pattern piece already cut out. This is printer paper, and it works fine with this type of paper, but it doesn't really work that well with the tracing paper that I usually use for my pattern drafting. That being said, to me personally, it is not as convenient because it actually adds an extra step to what I'm already doing. So yes, it works, but to me, the convenience just isn't there. I just think that I'm going to stick with my tried and true seam allowance adding hack that I've been using for years now. You take two pencils or two pens, tie them together. These particular two give me one centimeter seam allowance, which I absolutely love to work with. And then, ta-da! Easy, convenient, 
one stop, and that's it. Your seam allowances are done. This next sewing tool is called a diagonal seam tape. My first question when I first saw this was, wait a second, why is it called a diagonal seam tape if the lines are parallel? And here's why. You actually don't need much. You just need a tiny little piece to cover this little bit of the front of your sewing machine. So what you want to do is, you want to align the red line that you see in the middle of the tape with the position of your sewing needle. So if I lower the sewing needle, I can tell where exactly it is located and then I can go ahead and I can place this tape. Additionally for this test I have prepared little cotton squares that are three inches by three inches. I have black and white so that way we can see a little bit better and this is the next thing that we're going to do. You would take two little squares, place them together, you would take this little corner and you would place it underneath your needle and you would align this corner with the red line on the tape. So just like in sewing, we don't look at the actual needle. We want to focus right over here and always keep this little corner aligned with the red line of the tape. And that gives us a straight diagonal line from one corner to another every single time. So that way you don't have to do any markings, anything else. This is just very easy and super convenient. I would say that the tape and the result that it gives plus the ease of use and the convenience of it is definitely five out of five. If you're a quilter and you have to get hundreds of these little things done where all of your design is relied upon the precision and the beauty of those really crisp lines, this tape could definitely be a lifesaver. It removes easily and quickly and the texture and the feel of this tape is the same as of the washi tape. This is really great and I'm not even a quilter. By the way, this was just one of the ways how to use this tape. I'm sure if you're an experienced quilter, you have a couple of tricks up your sleeves on how you would use this one time and time again. So if you do have any tricks, let us know in the comments. I would love to read what you guys have to say. And by the way, all of the links to all of the tools we have tested today, you will find in the description box underneath this video. While we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and test this next sewing gadget. So here it says, roll to press seam or fold, won't pull, stretch or distort fabric, tapered wheel to focus pressure on seam, prevents seam impression on right side of the project, comfortable ergonomic handle, ideal for paper piecing and laminate, and used to seal glued seams on leather and felt. So this could be quite an interesting multifunctional little tool. Now I also do card making as well and a lot of paper crafts and I actually just lost my bone folder. So if this works on both fabric and paper, then this is a win-win. So from what I understand, you go ahead and you take your piece of fabric where you would like to press the seam, you open the seam, and then what you do is you just roll and press. I'm having a bit of trouble with the smaller seam allowance and on the wrong side of the fabric, it does look a little crinkly, but oh, on the right side of the fabric, look at that. It really is crisp over here. So the right side of the fabric does press crisp. The wrong side of the fabric, I mean, I'm not a professional of this. Um, I'm on the fence about this. Although it did give a really nice crisp result on the right side of the fabric, I'm not really a fan of the result on the wrong side of the fabric. And uh, you know what? This is cotton, so cotton always creases really easily, so you can even finger press it. But how about polyester? And after that, also, let's try it on paper. I will go ahead and simply fold it in half to see if it does the job. So as I was thinking, polyester doesn't really crease well. And now let's go ahead and try this on the paper. Gonna fold it in half, place it over here, and let's do this. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, for paper, it works like magic. I would say it works, but in a very particular set of circumstances, especially when you're working with natural fibers that press easily to begin with. And of course it works like magic on paper. It actually did a really nice clean job with that. So to me personally, in my use, I work with garment construction. I would give it four stars out of five, but I can totally see when this could be a useful little tool for those who quilt a lot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Okay, so I realize that most of you probably store your thread upright or on a thread holder or a thread organizer. However, and I had one of those, but over the years I realized that I actually prefer storing my thread in a horizontal position in a plastic organizer like that. I like it much better, it's just a personal preference. And then I also have a little toddler who loves to play with thread spools, but as a result, I kid you not, this is what happens. So these tiny little colorful tools are supposed to help with uh, preventing this from happening. So basically you take this spool, you wind it back up, there we go, and then you take one of these and you pop it over the place where the end of the thread is at. I bet it probably fits a little bit better over these small ones, so let's go ahead and try that. There we go, pop it open, Oop. like that. So right now, I don't think I can actually rate this because time will show. And at one point, I did use those little nets in order to keep the threads away from making that big mess. But I can tell you for sure that my little one definitely enjoyed playing with these. She even dressed up my wooden mannequins with those. So if nothing else, it's another sewing tool that my little one can be fascinated and occupied for a little bit while I do my sewing stuff. All right, we're back at the sewing machine because this next tool is bulky seam jumper. And of course, we have to test it out. So you know when you're sewing really bulky seams on jeans or maybe in a crotch area or maybe there are just a lot of seams that are meeting each other and when you sew over them let's say top stitching or hemming or anything else like that what usually happens is the stitches get really really small and then sometimes they kind of get a little jagged so it's not a really nice look so what this is supposed to do it's supposed to prevent that it also says that it can double up as a shank to sew buttons and as a needle inserter oh it comes with instructions I absolutely love that so it features two sides, one is thinner and one is thicker. I've taken three little squares from our previous test and I've pressed seam allowances all to one side so that way this right side has significantly thicker seam than what we have on the left side. So it should be a good one. So we start stitching like normal. Once you get to that seam, you take your little tool, you lift up your presser foot, you insert it from behind like so and you continue stitching. Once you get to the middle of the seam, you can go ahead, remove this tool from the behind and place it in the front. This way you get consistent little stitches all across your seam. It doesn't matter of the thickness of the seam. Here we have six layers of fabric. Here we have three layers of fabric. And if I turn it to this side, you can see it's just nice and even. I've actually made the same sample without the seam jumper. I just wanted to see the difference. And let me show you. I think this side is familiar to anybody that has been sewing for quite some time. You can always see the stitches get a little bit smaller when we're sewing over the bulky seam seam and let me show you this uh, with the seam jumper there we go this is with and this is without so I think you can clearly see the difference also you can use that as a needle inserter right here when you're changing needles Remember how I told you that I usually try to make it work with what I already have at home? So usually what I would use in order to sort of lift up my presser foot when I'm sewing over the bulky seams was just whatever I would find, like, a, I don't know, a piece of elastic eraser or, you know, literally anything. But this is a really nice nifty little tool and it definitely makes it a lot smoother, especially because it has these little inserts. So yeah, this is really nice. What do you think? Does it deserve five out of five? This next one was suggested by you, my dear sewing friends. I uh, must admit, I was really so excited. I actually unpacked this thread and I tested it right away. So I wanna show you something. So I have two threads here. This is just 100% polyester Gutterman thread that you would use in your sewing machine regularly. But this one is the one that we're going to be testing today. And I think it could change the way you sew your knits in the best way possible. This is Eloflex thread by Coates & Clark, which is a stretchable thread. It might not be so apparent at first when you just unroll it and sort of feel and touch it, but when you actually compare it to a regular thread, oh yes, it is a stretchable thread. So this is Gutterman. If I unroll it and sort of try to stretch it, it doesn't really stretch. But this is Eloflex. So watch. Do you see how it expands? Just watch my hands move. Wow! You know what that means? You can potentially sew knit and stretch fabrics with a straight stitch on your sewing machine and not worry about those stitches popping one bit. It goes in around your bobbin just like any other regular thread. So there is a vast difference between an elastic thread and this stretchable thread. And now, the moment of truth. 
of course we have to compare it. The top one over here is just a regular polyester thread and the bottom one here is the Eloflex. I'm gonna try to pull them with the same amount of strength. So this one is the regular thread. Oh, all right. <laughs> you see what happened here? And this one is the Eloflex. All right. All right. Does it stretch for days? No, but it's definitely more flexible than the regular thread. <laughs> you sew what I sew, so I think this could be a really great solution for a lot of you who sew knits on the sewing machine and for everybody else who sometimes gets themselves in a sewing pickle and you have to think of unique solutions. This could really be a lifesaver. So from where I stand, for me, this is five out of five. And thank you so much for a great suggestion. I absolutely love it. All right, if you want to know 10 sewing tips that will instantly elevate the quality of your sewing and make your life a lot easier, then you have to click on the video right over here. I think you will really find it useful, so click right over here. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that this was useful, that you found something new and interesting. And until next time, happy, thoughtful sewing. I'll see you very soon. Bye!